Hello. Hello guys. Hello everybody. What's up, Felipe? Hey, How Felipe. What's up, Zach? What's up? Hey. Dang, I haven't talked to y'all in, in a long time. No, I <laughs> yeah, right? you. <laughs> I've been, been good. Uh, enjoying your school, your sports and stuff. Oh yeah, I yeah. am. I'm doing track oh. right now. Nice. What, what are you doing track? Uh, I'm I'm jumping. I'm not I'm not I'm not a sprinter. I'm gonna do I'm gonna do jumping. I rather do nice. that. You do the high jump or the long jump or like? I don't even know yet. Tryouts just started um this week. I didn't go um yesterday though. Sorry though, I'm oh, still gonna okay. Nice. Later, um, I'm gonna go with my friends and we're gonna go smoke. Oh. I wanna like try to do something. Yes, you should. Is that gonna be the first time you've smoked? Smoked weed? What, um, today? Or have have you ever haven't you not smoked weed before? No, I have. Oh, you have. Oh, okay. I've never did shrooms, and I, I don't want. I don't want to. I'm I'm kind of like, I don't really want to. Not yet. Yeah, all in divine timing. You don't need them. Yeah, I, I don't think I do. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, What's up, Aang? Hey. Wait, so any event that y'all did, do y'all like record it and y'all post it in the server? Yeah, yes. Andy does. Hey. So have you guys been having any interesting astral experiences or anything lately? Mm -hmm. I don't want to tell y'all about like um, a person I met and he's he's definitely reptilian, but like I didn't know he was into anything like like anyway, he does like, you know what Aoife is? It's like magic like and they use like their the African um like like Shango and no, I think y'all. No, but continue, please. Okay, so anyways, I found out that he does stuff like that, but he's caught. He he does it in like he say he doesn't do it in a bad way, but he say he calls on the demon and he posts a whole bunch of stuff on Instagram, saying like he calls on the demon and stuff. But anyway, I smoked with this this dude once, and I didn't really like. Nothing bad happened to me, but um, my friend Javon, he lives right up like he lives in my neighborhood and. Ever since he, he was smoking with him, he, like, had a lot of bad things happening to him, and he actually, like, left his body on the bus, and he said he was very scared, but it was, like, a, like a voice telling him that it's, he wasn't dead, but he still was feeling like he was dead. But, um, I eventually, like, I added it all up, and it made me think, like, he put a curse, he tried to put a curse on all of us, but, like, and my other friend, too, because my other friend is a little spiritual herself, and she hasn't even been realizing what's going on, so I'm, I'm it's weird, like, she hasn't realized that he's, he just, I don't know, he's like kind of negative, but my friend has, 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 a, has had a lot of bad things happening to him, and 
He just hasn't been feeling right. But recently he came to my house. And, but he's a Christian, so he he like he only believes in Jesus and only that. But he let me like sage him and stuff like that. I don't know. I, I did some things like that. Like, I was trying to like feel like I was breaking curses and stuff like that. And I was like cleaning his energy. And at the same time, I did my house. And ever since then, he felt okay. But that was like, I felt like that was a mission for me. Ooh, tell us about it a little bit. <laughs> or for okay. me, since I'm late. <laughs> okay, so it was this person, this reptilian person that I met. met, And he does like, you know what Ifa is? Ifa, like with the no. African. Okay, do you know like the African guys and all them like Shango, um, Ogun and all, all those? So basically he calls on them or something like that. And he calls on the evil one supposedly that he calls the demon. I don't know why he calls it the demon because... I looked it up and he's not the, he's not the demon, but he said he calls on him anyways. But we all smoked with him once. Me, my friend Javon and Andrea, and we smoked with him. And ever since then, stuff has been happening. Like it's a lot of drama with him. Not with me, cause I, I kind of like separated myself. But I I was thinking like that my friend, cause he had a lot of bad stuff happening to him, and he left his body on the bus. He basically like he asked to project on the bus. He said. And he, he said nothing like that ever happened. And he was asking me about it. Like, he was saying, like, I remember telling y'all something like this. I texted it. But he came to me. He was like, man, I left my body on the bus. I was scared. And, like, I felt like I, I thought I was dead. And I was trying to call y'all's name. But I, I was floating in the air. Y'all couldn't hear me. And he was wow. saying, like, a voice. He, he called it. He said it was Jesus. 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 <laughs> he said, because he's a Christian. But he he. he he said it was Jesus, and it, it was trying to tell him that he's not dead. And what's happening is okay, but he said he was still scared. I don't know how we got back into his body, though. But a lot of bad things have been happening to him. He hasn't been, he's been feeling, like, really sick and, like, just feeling like he's dead. But There's two other guys that I think you're friends with who are serving as, like, assignments. Do you know who that is? The one there. that is feeling bad? There's two of them. I think I think they're both guys. One's a girl and one's a guy. And they're serving like assignments. Maybe not yet, but you're gonna be helping them with some sort of spiritual stuff soon. Yeah, that's that's actually like I feel like I know you're talking about um her name is Andrea. She okay. she's like uh I don't really like using the word woke anymore, but I guess you could say she's a woke or whatever. And she knows certain things, I guess. But um her who also was with us, and, and I feel like the, the dude that I was talking about was him, too. Um, His name is Jaquavius. He's a reptilian, and we smoked with him. I don't know why I did it, but I did. And nothing bad happened to me, though. But, okay. yeah, I just wanted to tell y'all that. And, oh, I, I didn't tell you this part where I I, I I um I brought him in my house, and we were talking about everything. And first, I say, he doesn't even, like, they you know, Christians, they call sage and crystals, all that stuff demonic, but... Um, first I staged my house, but I was just like telling him to close his eyes and like just think of anything like light and just like every all of like the bad stuff going away. And I just like all I could do was I just try to sage him, like sage his whole body and like try to break anything that was attached to him. And he said he felt better after that. Like he he he, he sings really good, but he wasn't singing for a while. Like he said his voice messed up, but that same day. He was all happy singing and stuff, but I wow, feel like I hope awesome, bro. I'm actually proud of you for that. I mean, we're all proud of you for that. Good job. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So in this class, you know what? I wanted to leave this one kind of open. I like the way we started it. And I'm curious what you guys wanted to touch on today. In my head, I thought, okay, maybe we need to touch on a little war between light and dark and talk about that history in the galaxy and the history now. But let me know what you guys want to touch on today. I'm very open to anything. Mm. I think the light versus dark. Let, let's do that one. Okay. I think yeah. we should do that one too. Okay. So let's go to the Orion Wars. Let me pull up our favorite PowerPoint. <laughs> And we're going to go straight to the Orion Wars. 
one thing I've noticed, y'all, and I want to mention this really quick because we do need to talk about. Um, that's why I also made a Draco event for us to talk in because there is some misunderstanding still related to the Draco that we need to touch on, especially people that have Draco heritage. So I want to touch on that a little bit in the Orion Wars as well. Okay, here we go. Oh, there's a video link to it. Okay, these people know what they're doing. <laughs> okay, here we go. So it starts about right here. Let's start right here. So you can see there's something. It says the Orion Empire. Now, this is really important because I kind of wanted to get away from calling. I I'm trying to find a new word because we always say the reptilians. And even though that's accurate, we need to mention this real quick not all reptilians are negative and we already know this but i'm trying to drill this into your guys minds so that there could be no area where you can be uh misguided or misled within anything 80 percent of the galaxy is positive now and which also means that 80 percent of the beings are positive here so the draco did have a time when they were all negative or i'd say majority negative and then just like when you look at earth history, like when you look at maybe during the slavery days, you'd say that most white people or Caucasian people were racist, but now it's not like that anymore as much. Right. And so it's the same thing with it when it comes to the Draco. Now the, you know, the, I want to use the Europeans back in the day as a good example because they were uh, operating from a reptilian agenda and the way they were enslaving and doing what they were around the globe you you just see it was a a regular you know reptilian agenda but now we have the struggle on earth where we look at where we still have a lot of people looking at white people as the bad guy same thing with reptilians we can't look at our reptilians as the bad guy but behind the dark empire majority of them are reptilians so this is where it could get where it could get complicated or like misunderstood so if you were to go in the galaxy now like if you were to go back on mothership you see reptilians walking all around they're all positive helping us out hugely but when you look at the dark empire it's led by reptilians so that's where we have that miscommunication and misunderstanding and now we're going to go straight into the war versus light versus dark and i woke up this morning and they told me to make the event Saturday and I wasn't going to because it's Remembrance Day today. And I was like, oh, take a break, um, just do some other stuff. But then I was like, nah, this has to be Saturday. And I asked them this morning, I'm like, what do you guys want me to talk about? And they told me the one of the first things right away was light versus dark. So I was like, OK, looks like we need to go back to the Orion Wars. So when we look at I, we definitely need to go back into history again, like a whole kind of history lesson and we kind of touch on that now but i think we need to touch on the different wars that have happened now the great wars the great lyran wars is like ancient history that's like we look at that like how we look at the slave days now we're like whoa that's like long time ago right <laughs> but now we're at this moment in the galaxy we're in what they call the terran wars so the war over earth and the complications with earth like every being is connected to earth right now which is why the best of the best are here so the war of light versus dark it's kind of like okay so when i was asking them about it i said what specifically do you want me to talk about with the light versus dark and they were telling me you need to mention how the light needs the dark and the dark needs the light and right when they told me this, I was scrolling on Instagram just for a little bit, saying what's up to my homies. And then I look and everything kept coming up, light versus dark, light versus dark, and how much you need both. And so that made me think about you guys as important agents of the Federation. I was like, okay, this needs to be drilled in my head because every time I would go out in the world and do assignments, I'd always say, get rid of darkness. We need to get rid of darkness. And then they would... The weird part is, I felt like something wasn't right saying that. I was like, there's more to this, but I don't know yet. And even now, I still don't fully understand it. But what I do know now, I'm like, oh, okay, that makes more sense. 
So look at light versus dark like this. We have the chakras of the universe, which is like the, the densities or dimensions. So we have 12D to 1D. Now, the third density is the most dense. The second and first don't fully understand those ones yet. But third density from what we know is like is like the root chakra of the universe. So when when we look at the root chakra of ourselves, we don't see it as bad. But when you look at low vibrational people, they operate so much from the lower chakras, like it's all lower chakras. But when you're high vibrational, you don't get rid of your lower chakras, right? You use them, but you 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 use them in the unison with the higher ones. So when you look at it like that, it makes total more sense. It makes you be more open to darkness. Now, you guys will ask, okay, well, what is the purpose? What is the purpose of the darkness? Darkness essentially makes us strong. It makes us powerful. When you look at the Draco in their culture, even the dark Draco, I'm like, whoa, let's go, bro. Because they're so fierce and mighty and they run shit like that. That's how they, they, they rely on that, though. And then when they rise to a high vibration, they still keep that might and that power, but in a higher vibrational way. And so studying the Draco, I realized, okay, this whole light versus dark thing, it's more, um, we all understand it because we're more advanced souls and now we're here, but now we have to re-remember. So you're going to have a relationship with the dark. For example, before we go into the PowerPoint, look at anything dark that's ever happened to you. And you look at it now and you basically use it as power. You're like, actually, like say, say for example, you got bullied a lot. Now you look at you and you're so much stronger. All those guys that bullied you or all those girls that bullied you, it's like they're, they're struggling now or they're not as strong. And it's like your strongness has risen above them or your strength has risen above them. And not to get over who's better or worse, but you notice the difference strength and power between those who went through a lot and those who didn't go through a lot or or had it a little bit easier so the draco are essentially or were dark way back then because of what they went through they had a very rough history and i am at the moment still trying to understand it which is why the draco powerpoint is is a little later because i was like okay i'll understand it then so don't fully understand it yet, but they went through a hell of a lot. And it makes me it makes me uh not sad though, because you, you look at them, it makes you understand because you're like, okay, I see why they operated in this way. Now the light versus dark war is actually the most interesting because it's the most modern war you could find even though you could still consider it ancient it's still um it's not as ancient as like the great lyran wars so it's more modernized warfare so you see great lyran wars it was like we were literally fighting physically each other and it was a a light versus dark kind of thing still but it was very what we call back home we still call it primitive but there's a better word for it it's just less advanced and then you look at the orion wars and that's when it's getting more modernized now you look at it now and we're a very modern galaxy still fighting um the dark empire but not as much so here at the powerpoint we're the pleiadians and then here we're at the orion empire and i actually rather call them the orion empire because i don't want to just say reptilians and then you know it kind of almost feels offensive to me or like people anybody that has like lyran or galact what am i trying to say reptilian soul heritage when you have that and you keep saying all oh, the reptilians are here you're like whoa it's like it's kind of implying something and i i'm trying to get away from that too did those wars happen in like 5d so what happened was the lyran wars happen in 3d and 4d you could say and then the Orion Wars happen within 4D totally. So the 
even the Terran Wars now, we we call it the spiritual war on Earth. We're like, oh, there's a spiritual war going on. Essentially, the 40 war. That's why I rather call it that. And so it's just like the Orion Wars and what we saw there. So just like in Orion, how we were talking, how fun it was, how you go over here and then you're like fighting on the streets and then you go over here and then you're partying in the club. And when you get memories, you see that and you're like, wow, okay, well, was it good or bad? Like, what's up? <clears throat> but you just you just see, okay, it was it was a mix. And that's why the Orion Wars, some of you will see as some of your favorite soul moments. So let's look right here. As the Orion Empire expanded, polarities polarized. So it was just like the Lyran Wars. You see how they're polarizing service to others for the betterment of all and service to self for the betterment of all. And so it was going like this. And now when you look at the Orion Empire, the Orion Wars, you see how much is separated. So it went from this to this. So it polarized from controlling dominators and selfless victims. The Orion Empire became technologically advanced while in deep spiritual conflict. So you see it was like, when they say spiritual conflict, it's, um, you would see it, I keep referring to Earth because it's the best example one we most know of, but it's very similar to like Earth. When you look around, you see people of pure light and you see over here people of pure dark and then you can see the different polarities of it. Some that are a little bit light, some are a little bit dark. That's the spiritual war because I want you to normalize, normalize in your being a whole planet being one vibration. So I actually, you know what? If you want to experiment with this, I want you to close your eyes right now. I want you to breathe and I want you to feel your soul. Now that sounds weird, but I literally want you to feel past your brain, past your emotions and feel your soul. You're going to notice it feels like it's right here, like in your chest. And so you may feel like, you may start to feel like the blood pulsing through you. You can feel your mind kind of move in and you can feel your thoughts. That's because you're feeling the different layers of yourself. Now I want you to go to the layer of soul. The being that has access to all of those things. That, that views the mental, that views the emotional. It's the thing that experiences it all. Feel that. That is you. Now I want you to feel the contents of that and I want you to put it, clear your mind and allow that soul energy to go to your head. And when you do this, you're going to notice you see flashes of stuff. Now you may ask yourself, oh, am I crazy? Am I just making stuff up? If you cleanse your mind and you get in touch with your soul, you're going to start seeing images or things and it's just going to feel right. It's not going to be like, oh, I don't know. You're going to be like, that feels right. That is it. So I want you to stay in this a little bit. And I want you to kind of look around. What do you see? What do you feel? What type of attributes do you have at that time? Maybe your energy, your personality. Some of you, you're going to see times when you were a victim. Sometimes you'll see areas where you're a dominator. Or where you're really light or you're really dark. Now the Orion Wars, it was like that. It went from people that were so light and didn't, that were like repelling the darkness. So they were too nice, essentially for lack of a better word, just like we were in Lyra. And we were too, the, the, the people that were um, on the opposite end, they were too they were too dark and they were too dominative. So you could see where things, this is where the Orion Wars taught us a lot. And these, I'll tell you how the Orion Wars ended. It lasted millennia. So it ended in essentially like a stalemate. They're like, all right, nobody can win. And we got order. So most of the Orion Empire, or not the Orion Empire, the Orion Constellation is like better, right? So there's not as much conflict. So if, if you're still in that kind of meditative state and you're kind of accessing your soul, I'm going to give you a minute to just feel out what you see. Okay. And then at the end of this, 
then I want some of you to share if you like to. <clears throat> so I'm going to scroll up. I'm going to go back to um, the galactic picture to show you guys a little bit of Orion. Okay, I think here's a good area. So I could feel some of you. I love the energy each you are emitting right now. Like some of you, I could feel you in your angelic lives. I could feel some of you in like seeing some dark stuff. And maybe if you're, some of you are still kind of deeply attached to Lyra as we all are. But if you are feeling Lyra, remember you're going to also feel the felines in their warriorship, but you're also going to see the humans and kind of looking up to the felines and then the reptilians looking up to the avians. I want to mention that because I know some of you are there. Now, Aaron just said, I don't understand how to feel my soul. Okay, I'll say this. Okay, I want you to just look, look at yourself for a second. Now, you know when you're looking at yourself and you're thinking, you're, you're like thinking, wow, you're like you're looking at yourself. Look past your thoughts. You're like, I'm the one viewing my thoughts. I could also create thoughts, but I'm viewing, I'm spectating them. I'm experiencing these emotions. Even your emotion where you're like, oh, I can't feel my soul. That is you experiencing your emotions. So you, the only way to explain it is you are you. You're the watcher. You're the, you're the one behind everything. You're just here experiencing. It's just like when you're in a video game and your video game, say you're playing Sims, then you're like, Sim is like hungry and then it's upset and then it's thinking about stuff and it's essentially like that. But you're the one, you're the one behind the Sim. So that is the soul. So you are the person behind the Sim character living in the Sim game. You're like, I'm way beyond this game. And with that, and you know how like when you're playing Sims and you could view, you could view the different um, Sims games in the same game you play. Like you have one house and you have another house and another house, but they're different Sims characters that you tap into. Those are like your lives. Put it like that. So you're playing, I always used to play Sims 4 and I would always name my guy Jamaj. I, I don't know why. I thought about that last time. I'm like, why did I always name him Jamaj? But I would play that guy, but I would still remember the other Sims that I would play and like their kids and I'd learn a lot from those and I'd bring that into this Sim character that I'm playing now. That's just like your past lives. You're in this game, but you're like, oh, I remember way back in the day, like 10 houses or 10 sims families before this one i remember doing this this and that and that's why i'm not doing this with this sim character that's your that's like your soul helps me to move to a perspective where i'm observing myself observing myself exactly that is bomb that's what i want you to do is if, if you notice any of you are kind of struggling <clears throat> if you're like struggling with seeing your soul still just meditate a little bit and start to experiment with that feeling. So you may have to sit down and be like, okay, even me thinking right now, I'm viewing these thoughts. I'm experiencing these thoughts. All these emotions, I'm experiencing those emotions. And all of that is how you get to 5D. And that's how you start to view your other lives or your other Sims characters that you played before this Sim character. I really like putting it like that. <clears throat> Bro, I'm just getting over my sickness, so I'm like, I don't know about y'all. If y'all were saying you were sick, I'm like getting rid of all this mucus in my chest. So if you hear me coughing up. So I want you to look at it more like that. So then people, because people are so much like, how do I get to 5D? How do I get there? I want to view my past lives. But it's because you haven't stepped in that mentality of 5D yet. Which means you have to be the observer of yourself. I was sick too. I'm getting over it now. Okay. Okay, good. I know a lot of my, everybody I talk to you lately is sick or they're getting over a sickness. So no coincidence, right? Okay. So look at this picture. So 
Earth is really close to Orion. And Orion, essentially, you'll see here, it says the Orion Spur. That is the Orion constellation. So it is huge. So diverse. It's like its own arm. Like you look at all these other parts and they have larger arms like Perseus arm, outer arm, all of that. But Orion has its own thing. Which is so cool, but also why it's like the America of the galaxy. Orion is one of the, I, we call it in history, the heart of modern times. Because it was like creating America, literally. Where it's like, okay, all of us are around the world. We got the Asians, we got the Native Americans, we got the black people, we got the Spanish people. Bring them all together. And then we have to, we're learning to mesh. That was like an Orion. We had to learn how to mesh with each other. And so at this moment, we're in like the Orion Wars type energy on Earth. Not just because it's a 40 war, but how humans are learning to mesh with each other. Okay, that's important about the Orion Wars we're talking about. Because Earth is even still, or humans I should say, are still figuring out their shit, as you know. But in a way that they're trying to understand each other. So... I was just watching a movie last night called The Great Wall. Love that movie. So, so good. Taught me so much and so much soul stuff I needed from that movie. But one big thing was the Asian culture. I love, I'm so obsessed with Asia. And you know what? I say this with all the cultures because I'm obsessed with Asia and Asian cultures. I'm obsessed with Native American culture. I'm obsessed with African culture. Like, there's just so much. I'm like, bro, you guys are so damn cool and beautiful. And as I go in, I start to see where the core of our division is. It's like you look at you look at the Asians and people are like, oh, all the Asians are like this. They did this and they did that. But you look at it and they just have a different culture and way of doing things in a way that they have, they have become successful. Just as America, just as Europe, just as Africa. So... We just have a, so much lack of understanding of each other, especially the core. The worst one is the Africans and black people because people are like, well, they're so primitive. Um, you know, they, you know, they're fighting for water and all of that. I'm like, dog, if you knew about African history, you'd see the African empires, huge ones that are still there and more, majority of them destroyed by the Europeans. And the Africans selling themselves. Then when they realized they were selling themselves, then they got enslaved. So it was a whole way. Yes, Mazamuza. Bro, you guys know your history. What? Luca wrote the richest man in history was a black man, Mazamuza. And he actually led part of his people. He led his empire across the water before Christopher Columbus to the Native Americans, which is so damn cool. And the Native Americans and Europeans called the African sun people. And they said that they said there was uh, dark skinned people floating across the ocean in golden boats and their boats made out of pure gold and stuff like that. And the Europeans used to go to Africa, especially West Africa, to learn from the Africans until they took advantage of it. Right. But you don't hear about that history. You don't hear about that at all. You don't hear about how the Egyptians were black at one point and then they cleansed it. That's why they shot all the noses off the pier off the, you know what I'm talking about, the statues. So you see so much that it's like, why is it hidden? And then when you um, when you open up your mind, you're like, oh my God, we just don't understand each other. We have lack of understanding. And then you look at, okay, well, who's behind all of this? Who's keeping all this chaos? Who's keeping all of this division? And they've made it real good so that everybody looks at the white man. They're like, oh, he did it. He did it. And now you see so many people plotting against white people. I'm like, stop that. <laughs> stop doing that. But I was pro-black at one point. I did the same thing until I realized the truth. There is plans behind all of this. And you know exactly what I'm talking about. So never point fingers just as so many in the galaxy are still pointing fingers at the draco they're like they did it they did it but the reptilians and the draco they had their own war going on amongst themselves 
and when you look at it you're like oh and you don't even you don't even have hate toward the dark reptilians anymore so it's it's so cool to see how similar it is like they always explain it to me like this the black people are the lyrans and the white people are the draconians when you want to compare stories and then the other races are like the other races in the galaxy that all of course some from lyra like how black people are the eve gene or the core of all the other races but it doesn't change anything it's just history right so this is what i mean by removing the mental parameter set for you to think by by the people here and what has been programmed into you or how your brain usually thinks and expand past your mind you don't ever kill your ego you'll hear that oh kill the ego you'll never kill the ego you only rise above it so i'm like <laughs> you know i want to mention this because i think it's so cool this is why they have me watching so many spy movies how like how they live double lives how they live as a spy and within the spy community and all of that but then they, or like they're a superhero and then they live as just a plain person and we do that too we have like double lives that are now meshing with the awakening of people so there's like this oh you know like me to my family i'm just vinny and they they see me of course with certain things right and they see what i post on social media but they're like oh that's vinny um vinny doing this vinny doing that but they don't know the true stuff that i do or that we do and they will know though especially in 2027 well actually let me get into that real quick <laughs> thank you luca 2027 is when the ets are coming we you may notice you're getting a lot of assignments now or you're being prepped to come really quick like evolve really quick for the masses because we are in heavy heavy assignment mode right up so you guys are going to be working really hard until 2027 okay all of us and that is actually i i haven't really been clear with you guys fully on the true purpose of this server I have told you guys so much of the goal, but there are so much more intricacies and stuff that I can't wait to disclose more to you guys slowly. The big thing is preparing. The one that I couldn't wait to tell you guys and was waiting to tell you guys was preparation for 2027, getting people ready for that. Now, this is the thing. The Galactic Federation told humans, you have until 2027 to expose the truth or we will. And now earthlings, because we, we want to give earth people time to do it themselves, right? We don't want to infiltrate, but with the way the, the, the dark ones are doing here, we're like, all right, we got, we got to get on the ground, right? So we're here and the governments are all like, oh yeah, you know, um, what's going on here, this and that. And they're, they're like, we got it. We got things under control, but they're they're scrambling even the celebrities if you watch celebrity anything i always watch snapchat news to catch up on celebrity stuff they're all struggling to keep their power or for people to see them or for attention like you're looking at them you're like why are you you're not even serving any purpose you're just like crying for attention but that's a whole plan in itself okay so they're trying to outsmart the GFL, but the GFL is also outsmarting them, which is why you are here. In 2027, we're all going to take off our masks and be like this. And we're going to whip off our masks and we'll be like, oh, my God. And this is the way they explained it to you. I love it. They're like, Earth people had to get introduced to the galactic history and beings anyways. And imagine if we were to come on the ground. And then we were to come in 2027 and be like, hey, right? <laughs> and they'd be like, who the fuck are you? Right? But now we're here. We've been doing our work in 2027, 2028. We're going to be like, they're going to be like, oh, well, um, the ETs have been among us this whole time. And they're like, really? And then we go, we whip it off. 
and they're like, yo, and you know what? This this made me um interested too. Before I awakened, Don was like, they're all gonna know when 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 it's time. They're all gonna be like, oh my god, you're a Lyran, or like a Lyran is here, and everyone's gonna be like, oh my god, look, there's one right there. They're gonna know who you are, all of you. You're gonna be like, oh my god, a Draco. Oh my god, a Syrian. They're gonna do that, and then you guys got paparazzi. <laughs> You guys hit me like this, and then we're going to go back home. But we love Earth so much, this is going to be some of our home planets. So then we take off our masks, and then we introduce ourselves. We're like, oh, well, I've been doing this in the galaxy, this and that, whatever our soul history is and what we do. And then we're going to hop out, and then Earth is going to be like, bye, thank you. Right, thank you for saving us. It's It's going to be like that. So when the Galactic Federation showed me like that, I was like, that makes total sense, partly why we had to come here, not just to help them and to outsmart what's going on, but to introduce ourselves. So the GFL is so damn smart. And I love it. That's why I, as all of you are like generals, you could say, all of you are very VIP souls. Of, I would say... um what's a better name um just very important souls all of you have some sort of leadership or powerful role in the galaxy so you keep hearing best of the best well best of the best are here all of them are on earth and this is the big story the big big story they're gonna tell out there when we go home and that's what they mean by the terran wars because we all fought in our areas of the galaxy and now we're all on one planet and they're all, all the galaxy's favorite heroes are on Earth. And then we're going to go out. And then Earthlings going to be like, damn, they've been here like that. And we didn't even have the chance to be like, what's up, right? No chance to take some pictures. <laughs> so whether you believe that fully or not, I promise you, you will, you will see that's the truth as well. Okay, let me scroll to the Orion Wars a little bit more. Um, I don't want to go too in-depth, just what we need today. Okay, did I scroll too far? I'm looking at... Okay, yeah, I did scroll a little too far. Okay, so let's go here. So, non-physical beings in Arcturus and Sirius specialize in emotional healing and physical healing, respectively. This holistic healing dynamic for body, mind, spirit was and still is used on many planets like earth okay so syrians you may feel that that type of energy too like you you really resonate with this mind body spirit healing dynamic almost like i mean we all do because the syrians made it for, essentially for all of us and the arcturians made it for all of us but you feel it on a deep level like almost like i did that like i helped in the making of it because you literally literally did Okay, numerous conflicts became the Orion Wars, which lasted for eons. A resistance group formed to liberate the victims, but force was met with force, resulting in a stalemate. So it just kept this whole spiritual war just going on and on because we weren't getting the bigger picture of unity of light and dark. It was still like, oh, I'm dark, you're light. Essentially, it end up going into when you put it in a mental way of thinking. It's like when you're too light, you're too innocent and nice, and then you can't. It's like anytime darkness comes, you're out. Like you gotta run, or you become uh, taken over by the darkness real quick. And on the dark side, there's no life. There's no love. They have this war against love, and it's like you know we're powerful. And it's not always like we're going to kill everybody or take over the galaxy. It was just we they had the same agenda. The light did. The light was like, we want to spread our light across the galaxy, make sure everyone's good. And the dark was like, we want to spread our dark across the galaxy and get it so that everybody is right. And yes, light is closer to source and darkness is furthest away from source. But we need that. I have to really drill that because we need that. When the Pleiadians heard about the Orion Wars and the plight of the Lyran descendants, they felt the urge to help. And when they say Lyran descendants, they mean basically almost everybody in Orion. 
uh and all the basically all our cousins that were there the Pleiadians felt alive again in Zelius. We read this over before, but I'll keep going. Attacking the Orion negativity in many ways, and the Orion Empire struck back and destroyed a populated Pleiadian planet. And then, like we read before, the destruction of the Pleiadian planets impacted the consciousness of many across the galaxy. Reminded all of them of... It would be like... um, I, I was going to say like Lyra. Like remind everybody of Lyra. Just as humans in the future will look at Africa as like their Lyra, like the start of them. So that'd be like destroying part of an African country and then everybody would be impacted at, in the future and be like, oh my God, like they're, they're destroying basically the core of who we are, our home, where we originated from. And so it's the same thing with the Pleiadian planets. When it was destroyed, it reminded them, they're like, whoa. And so then they pulled out. And so they were like, yeah, we ain't going to do that. We got to figure out a, a good way to fight this. And Pleiadians came back later and did their thing. Now, I remember I, we always talk about how Pleiadians were, were always very bright and not technically warriors, but that's actually also a lie because Pleiadians is a huge, Pleiades is a huge, huge constellation. So some of you that are Pleiadian have more of a warlike touch. Some of you are like, nah, I just want to heal. Some of you are like, nah, I just want to be the light for everyone. It's mixed, but generally you'll notice Pleiadians are very, they're always really, always really bright. And depending on their personality and their soul personality, they're going to have uh, different ways of doing things. But you'll notice also that a lot of the Pleiadians that are warriors have Lyran in them, like a mix, like a, a hybrid. Ooh, can I mention that? Okay. So many of my lives, I wasn't just, you guys will see this too for your lives. You weren't just, when you say Lyran, people are like, oh, so you are a feline being. Well, yeah, but I love my human form too. So we have hybrid. You'll notice a lot of your lives are hybrid. Like I literally looked like Avatar, like in, on Pandora, literally like that, like big eyes, cat-like features, but human very human looking so you'll notice a bunch of your lives there's mix sometimes you look a little more one and sometimes you look a little more the other but i like i definitely like the mix because i was like oh i don't just want to be feline anymore i don't want to just be human i want both so we mixed it and lived like that so some of you'll notice that with that with your draco or um anything you'll notice there's a hybrid type life you had Okay, this is where the whole Jesus thing comes into play. And this is why Jesus came to earth as well. The founders decided to assist. They were like, all right, we got, we got to, we got to do something now. A founder fragmented and became the Orion Christ to remind people that they were connected to source. Just like Jesus did on earth. He came to remind people. Victims gradually became empowered in their personal sovereignty. And the empire slowly lost its power. Over time, peace was established across most of the empire or most of Orion. So then this is where you see the Galactic Federation come into play more. Now, the GFL was started long ago, first started by the Lyrans when the whole war started. They're like, all right, we got to collect some people to do some stuff and who have the same mentality. So it started here and then it started with Sirius and Andromeda. So they all started joining slowly. Now we're just waiting for Earth. Still waiting for Earth. So many star systems formed an alliance for governance, expanding, protection, trade, all of that. So when you when you astro project out there, it's mostly mostly high vibes and stuff like that. But you will see some that are a lot that are neutral and they like to be neutral, and some that are still on the plot, spread their darkness, and. That's the thing is on, on Earth and in our solar system, the GFL has enough power to get rid of them. So essentially they already lost. And what we're doing here, they already lost. But we still have to put our agenda in play and put things through, right? So they're doing what they can to slow it down or to make it hard for us and to get what they can out of Earth before we finally fully clean it up. Right? And then we're good and then Earth is good. But the GFL doesn't have enough 
for lack of a better word, power to get rid of the darkness totally in the galaxy. And um, I still don't fully understand why. Not because they're weak or anything, but part of it is because of the laws. Like we have laws of like non-interference. So some planets, they already signed the contract with the reptilians. And the GFL is like, we can't help you. You you agreed to do stuff with them. It's your free will. So we can only assist you in helping you in your plot, in your civilization's growth. But we can't interfere and stop things that you agree to do. So a lot of these planets, they've been fully meshed in the in the Orion or the Dark Empire. So it's kind of interesting how the Draco or the dark empire have outsmarted the gfl like that but the gfl is also outsmarting them it, it's a whole do you see what the political thing it's so intricate and this is why i'm working hard to understand it fully so you guys can understand it let me look at some of the comments more <laughs> that's interesting now i gotta find out why i'm obsessed with white and silver hair bro me too i always wondered why i loved white and silver hair i almost dyed my hair silver and then i was like all right let me let me calm down <laughs> let me calm down <laughs> i love silver hair and i also really love blonde hair blonde hair red hair and i only like dark hair because of how it applied to us in Lyra so when we were at peace our hair would be either silver or if we had some sort of touch of um fire any sort of firepower our hair was red but when we were in war or we were in any sort of really dark hard times our hair would turn black and it'd be like pitch black and you'll even see this in the one movie, um, Valyrian in the City of a Thousand Planets. The one, there's a planet called Mule, and they have beings called Pearls. Very similar Lyran um, story. It's almost exactly the same. And on that planet in the movie, when they're in real pain, or like when they're seeing their planet being destroyed, their eyes and their face are turning black. Like it went from blue and bright to like black. And then when they're when it went back to normal and their energy was better, then it turned back blue. So when I saw that, I was like, damn, they told us right there. So after that, it made me want to keep my hair black. I was like, all right, you know, we <laughs> not to we're having fun here, right? This is fun what we do. We love what we do here. But I'm like, ooh, I want to honor my Lyran side of me and how we would depict who we are part of who we are or what i hold on to is like the i always wanted red hair but i can't have red hair I, I want it to be natural like that but i'm like all right my hair is black and it's like a dark brown i want it to be like that i want to honor that for now cash do a section of your hair or dress i thought about maybe a small section maybe a strip i'm gonna take note of that okay yeah, I was almost I almost dyed my hair red the one time because I was so obsessed with it. And then I was like, you know what? If I do it, I would do it later. Okay, um, I'm looking at anything else we really need to touch on. This one was pretty quick because I don't want to make this one too long because there's also a lot to process here. And this everything we talked about is going to be on the gfcc youtube as well later once this one's posted andy's been helping with that so much he's been the one posting and editing these for us so thank you andy and once this is out you could also review and read it again uh listen to it and see what's up because this one was quite larger in terms of mentality tapping into yourself and your soul tapping into who you are as a being and the light and dark trope and not seeing it like we got to kill the darkness or we got to kill the light. We have to mesh them. We need both. <laughs> Robbie, I love, I love the picture. I want to, can I save that? Let me save the picture. She said, she said, Robbie gang. I like that. Yes, sir. <laughs> 
Now, let me say that real quick. I really like that. Oh, that's Sims. I didn't even notice that was Sims. <laughs> so if you guys have any questions, go ahead and ask anything. And I would also like for you, let, let's ask some questions first. And then if you guys want to share a little bit of maybe what you got when you were accessing your soul a little bit at the beginning of this event, um, I would love for you guys to share that after too. Uh, the one that looks like she's holding a knife already. <laughs> I'm going to re-dye my hair soon. Red again. More. More better than self-dyeing. I, I want to see that. I want to, I want to see that. Luca said, I had a problem concentrating, but I could see Draco in my mind's eye. Okay. If you want now, this mode, we could do it a little bit again. I'm going to answer some questions, and while we're answering some, if you want to go in your meditative state again and tap into your soul, go ahead. So just fully get into feeling you, your soul, okay? And then allow that energy to go to your mind and allow it to create pictures for you. While you do that, then uh, once we're done looking at some of the questions, then I'd love for you to share. Felipe said, I saw a merman. And I was swimming aggressively and I was mad or something. Ooh, see how you got a quick glimpse? It was like, it was quick. And then you're like, I want to, I want to understand what that was, how I got there. That's how your memories come about. It's so cool how they spark up like that. And then it triggers, it's going to trigger a whole effect of other memories. You're like, how come I was swimming so aggressively? What was I mad about? And then you're like, oh, I was mad because, um, my parents exiled me or something. And then I went over to this planet and then led to this, this and that. So you see core memories and moments, which help spark up the other details and smaller stuff. Really cool, eh? It's really like a movie, like how they remember their visions or like their memories in movies. And they're like, oh, I saw a glimpse of this. And then later on, they figure out more about it. It's just like that. Let's see. Do Arcturians wear purple hoods? I saw them in a dream. Yes, they do. Uh, some wear purple or blue. I mean, there, there's so much different like hoods or like cloaks they wore. But yes, they did wear cloaks. A lot of a lot of blue, a lot of blue for some reason, blue and purple. Oh, I could add some meditation music here when people rewatch uh, to meditate on past life info. Okay, that'd be cool. If you could put it in at the certain areas, that'd be cool. I should have came earlier. Does anyone know about an ET race called Edenians? Water beings, gardens of Eden landscape. Serious. Serious hugely. And um yeah, I don't I don't know much about it. Stavros actually is uh he's a young man who I've talked to for maybe about a year now. Very very skilled with his memory and understanding of being, so he's really cool. I'd love for you guys to engage some information with him as well. But um yeah, I don't know much about the Edenians. I just know it's that's in serious and the, the gardens and the landscape. So much Syrian and Alpha Centauri energy, which is really close to Earth. I've been talking to my Arcturian star family a lot, and last night they showed me a satellite. Oh, guess there's a real reason why they showed you the satellite. Guess you're going to delve more into that for sure. Does anyone know about... Uh, that look like tall gray, but indigo color and bit smaller head. She was wearing a long, dark blue robe. Ooh. This could be Andromedans. 
that's what I'm thinking. But it would all depend on their energy. You already know they have their separate energies. Sounds like... Sounds like Andromeda. I was just getting extremely harmonious vibes with peace as a blonde male. Ooh, bro. I saw her in my dream. She was, she was a guide on some walk. Interesting. Which beings have spaceships that look very futuristic? Girl, that's all of them. <laughs> That's all of them. All of them have these cool ass spaceships. I'm like, damn, how's that thing even like float? <laughs> like, <laughs> um, I I tried to ask. I'm like, okay, well, what spaceships are designated for what beings? Like, like, how do I know that spaceship is Anunnaki or Arcturian or Lyran? I still can't tell. I still can't. Right, like, how do y'all do that? What was that right? <laughs> I all fly so quickly, fly by and shoot. And you're like, yo. <laughs> okay, if anybody wants to take the mic for a little bit, I would love to hear some of, it could be anything, maybe an assignment, um, a mission, anything you want to share, or even some past life stuff you got recently or within the meditation. I would love for you to take the floor for a little bit and I'm so down to hear something. Okay, Ari said, I saw a vision with humans in there and I was wondering who they were. Okay, I'm trying to, I'm looking at your soul history and I'm looking at the area where there was human looking ones, but they're, they're kind of like everywhere, right? And I don't want to spoil um, some of your some of your accessing of memories, but know that it goes a little bit beyond just Orion. You're going to see your experiences in different star systems that didn't last too long or you went there just for a mission. Uh, Ari, for you, Alpha Centauri and those kind of Earth-like planets that are really close to Earth, have a deep meaning for you in your soul like it's something that you you hold it like this not quite sure yet why but that's going to be your discovery and i'm excited for that andy said i could tell most of the time which uh which is which is race or ship i oh i would love for you to tell me a little bit more about that because i cannot I like Alpha Centauri. Me too. So it's like the if you wanna they call it second earth sometimes or second Gaia. Ooh, Aaliyah. Yes, this why'd that hype me up? That hyped me up a little too much. <laughs> Flame of Lyra. My homie said feels like a mixture of both Andromedan and Arcturian. Okay. If anybody wants to share anything, feel free to go ahead and don't be afraid to speak because <laughs> all your guys' stories teach me something too. And I would love to understand some of you guys and where you are at. My elemental energy is electricity. I recently found out. Ooh, I can't wait for our event next week. Actually, let me look what it is. Our one on demon or yeah, demon hunting and ruins. That one is Wednesday at three o'clock EST. And that one, we're going to go into some ruins and there's some ruins that are based on certain powers. Like there's one for being able to move lightning or like electricity and i was like wow that's cool and there were so many other ones that i want to show you guys i think you guys would love that i just oh go ahead someone's gonna say something
unless I was mistaken. Someone said, I just realized that I wore a light blue cloak one day at school. Then I didn't know I was an Arcturian. Ooh. Okay. So you're feeling those Arcturian vibes, aren't you? Dive into that. We actually don't have a lot of... Honestly, maybe it's just me, but I haven't come across too many Arcturians within... Um, actually, that's a lie. That's a lie. <laughs> um, avians are the most rare at the moment. There's not a lot of avians. The only one I know at this point is Andy. He has the most avian lies out of all of us. And I actually try and I access some of his uh, memories and stuff so that I can understand the whole avian thing as well. His memories are really cool. Planet, oh lord. They're so cool. The bird-like energy and the humanoid bird type energy. Wow. It's very, it's so unique. Again, still trying to understand it. Mandy Handyman. <laughs> I had a few lives at Alpha Centauri for training for the Orion Wars. I was an admiral and gave a famous galactic speech. My name was Yamigus. Bro, you know a lot, eh? Damn, you like been going deep into your lives. <laughs> like, this is my, for those who know, it's reminding me of Marissa. And for those who met Marissa, she was in here for a little bit. <laughs> so marissa's real deep in demon hunting that little girl could fight some demons bro and just so you guys get a little hint about her um there was one time i was like oh i sent i was gonna send some or she came up to me she's like did you send some guards over to my house where you going to i was like i was like oh yeah because there's some stuff going on i was like oh yeah um i was gonna send some but they told me you're good and she was like, they literally, her angels pull up in my bathroom and were like, yeah, she's going to update me on her. And then she was like, yeah, my angels told me that you were going to send guards over. And so I told them to tell you that I'm good. And I was like, damn, girl. And then I would talk to her about anything. And then she's like, she's like, yeah, I know. I'll be like, you know, there was a reptilian there. And she's like, yeah, I know. I'm like, okay, well, did you know that guy's reptilian Starsee, the one over here that we met? Yeah, I know. My angels told me. I was like, girl, what? It looks like Stavros is that version. What'd you say, sorry? Oh, I just wonder how old she was. Oh, she's 10. What? She's young, bro. It's oh my crazy. Goodness. Yes. I can't wait for you guys to meet her more. Some of you already have, so you felt out her energy. But Stavros is very similar like that, but he has way more um insight into his past lives and other people's lives so looks like we got a little yin and a yang there so cool he's a younger girl i wish i was bruh she <laughs> i had to tell her to slow down because she's so advanced she'll come to me and like oh, like at one point um i usually sleep throughout the morning so like i wake up around 10 or 9 10 11 area and so when I'm astral projecting, I'll watch the kids walk to school and I'll analyze the astral things going on in the town. I got to tell you all more about that because a lot of intricacies with that battle in my town. But I would watch over the kids as they're walking to school and I'd even watch Marissa and analyze her doing her assignments. And she could like sense me. It was weird. Like I'm standing there and she could like see me, but not. And she came to me the other day and she's like, I was I was in school and I could just smell you all day. And she's talking about the oils I wear. I always wear my oils and everybody knows me for my oils. She's like, I could just smell you. And she's like, I was in the bathroom and I could smell you. I was up in my classroom and I could smell you. I was like, girl. <laughs> I was like, wow, it's because I was there astrally. I was I was watching over you. She's like, and I could feel you there, but I thought I was a mad woman. <laughs> and yeah she's good so maybe soon she will be able to 
have class students, especially on Astro Warfare, because she's very skilled and or getting very skilled in that real quick. So yeah, I I just thought that was interesting to especially with how young she is seeing how much she's held on to her astral awareness like that. I mean when when we're young we're very much more connected, right? And then we're programmed out of it. So she's just now these younger kids are allowed to hold it on for younger, which means they're gonna be very advanced quicker. So when they're our age, we're talking like we're old people, but when they're our age, they're gonna be so advanced but they're evolving so quick because they're important for the assignment or the greater mission till 2027 that's crazy she doing all that at 10 right you know her in real life i do yeah she lives in my town that's cool yeah she's one of the kids that are in the server that i mentor in person and a bunch of those kids I'm trying to get on here as well. Ones that do essentially spy work and assignment work for me within the schools. But I want to get them in here now. But they aren't fully, they're, they're still in and out of their mentality. They're aware, but they are kind of still, some of them are still trying to be hard and whatnot. But no matter what, they still do that spy work in their assignments, right? I could ask them, I'll check on this and, and they do it. Or protect this person and they do it they're really really good hash you're spying on kids <laughs> that's not, okay when you say it like that that sounds bad <laughs> you make it sound <laughs> bad but yes i do i keep an eye on all of the star sea kids within the school and i always have astral awareness in there so i know what's going on so all i gotta do is scan the school and then i'll ask the kids to do something for me or I'll be like, oh, this is happening in this classroom. And they're like, oh, did you go there astrally? I'm like, yes, I know about that. They'll just do this, this, and that, and this is good. And then they do their assignment. And whether that's um, befriending the kid that keeps fighting his bully, and then all of this is ending the lower vibrational energy in the school. So it's part of the spiritual war, the 40 war, we call it. All of you are going to operate like that maybe not necessarily with kids but with the people around you in the server your friends your family all of you you're serving as leaders and like the generals for the greater mission y'all giving the side eye <laughs> rose stop that dog <laughs> Does anyone have advice for me to stop beating my man? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I got you. Like, um, I'd rather type it though. I'm already. Okay, I'm already happy. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. So I want you guys to remember that too. That don't be afraid to start doing more spy work. It's going to be called upon you to do that within these next few years if not now next few years because we need more people who essentially were like a huge army which is why the government also watches us and almost all of you have seen evidence of the government watching you maybe we are cars or we're people coming up to you or watching you um, even bugging your equipment whatever it is they are watching everything we do because we're the aliens among them. And we have a huge, we're building a huge empire and army. All of you are, are an army. So in the future, especially a year from now, we're all going to be like so astrally, all you're going to be so astrally aware, you're going to know what's going on 24 seven everywhere. You're going to be like, oh, um, over here, this and that's going on. Let me just drive over there physically and do some sort of assignment work. Or, oh, this is going on in the astral. Can three of y'all come and help me fight this dark being that is basically controlling my town? And they're like, yep, I got you. And then you got your homies, then y'all go there astrally. That's what it's going to start looking like. And I still have some more stories to tell y'all. Because there's been, even in my town, there's a huge Alpha Draco that has been taking over, that has taken over my town, been operating my town like... It's essentially his turf. I'm going to send you a picture right now of what he looks like. 
His name is Akar Dajan. And I'm going to send you the picture. And I'm telling you this because this is essentially what you guys are going to be doing. Maybe not to like that huge extent, but you will be doing in some form. Okay, so let me find that telling picture. This is what he looks like. Almost exactly. His name is Akar Dajin. And ever since I started fighting the reptilians around my town, they would, so the smaller reptilians would start attacking me. And then it got to the point where I evolved so much that it was like nothing. And then I started trying to, it was actually Broly who's always there for me astrally. I was like, all right, I got this going on. Keep coming with me to the astral. And she's helped me fought so many reptilians that were attacking kids. And then the kids are good. They're like, oh, um, this and that cleared up. So we'd always have evidence of it. I'm like, okay, so they're good. But then this one reptilian kept leaving. And every time we would fight it, it would jump to a new person. And then we're like, all right. And at one point it just disappeared. I'm like, I need to find this reptilian again. And when I found it, I actually found the core, which was the alpha draconian. And when we went to fight him in the astral, it was me, Broly, and Ange. The first night we went out, we were like, damn, okay, this guy's way stronger than we thought. Because he has a whole empire. He'll send little reptilians or greys and things like that. He's the boss level. So this is what I mean by astral warfare. You're fighting the spiritual war in the physical. And then when you go in the astral, you're fighting the core of that spiritual war, which is the astral war going on and you'll have astral awareness in your physical body so you don't even have to astral project the fight in the astral war but you'll want to so you could be on the same level right the muffin man <laughs> okay i think I'm... yeah go ahead I was just gonna say we could we could sum it up if um if that's everything, but yeah, no, go ahead. Um, so you remember I was telling you earlier about the dude that was doing witchcraft and stuff, or basically witchcraft. Mm -hmm. Um, so I had a dream last night that he came into my house and he had a blunt and a gun. He had a blunt and a gun. I don't know why, but like he was in my house. He just, I don't know how he got in there, but I was telling him, like, you got to get out. You can't, you can't even, like, come around my house doing stuff like that. And, like, my mom ain't with all that shit. So, like, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. What my, it was, the dream was random, though, but I felt like it had a meaning. But um, I guess he got mad at me because I was tell, telling him to get out of my house. Mm -hmm. And we got into a fight, and I was beating him up, and he, he pointed a gun at me and was trying to shoot me. And, like, I kind of, like, got behind his desk. I was like... I was I was thinking like the desk gonna protect the bullet, but he didn't shoot me. I don't really remember what was happening. I, I think we like me and my dad. I think we like I don't really remember. I think we stopped him. And then like I, I don't know. It was just weird because it was like making me think, why is this person like keep popping up in my head? And you remember you you said there was an assignment with those two people. Mm -hmm. Do you think you have anything that you could think of about that? He's been around you a lot energetically, which you could transform into understanding or transfer that mentality to understand that he's around you astrally. So astrally, he, he's the one that you were saying is like a wizard or a witch, right? Yeah, he does. Supposedly, he does stuff like that. Like he has a video of like candles and like like a skull. Oh, yeah. So. He does for sure. And he's practicing with it. And he's unconsciously astral projecting at this point he's getting awareness of his astral trips so i want you to for now with that you know that he's visiting you astrally and you could set up things whether you're in your physical or in your astral form you could set up things so he doesn't come into your house and spread that energy in your house or you know you could handle it however you like but know that it's happening and he's gaining more awareness of his power so he's gonna start experimenting more and the, sounds like the reptilians are kind of pulling him to you know his their side so yeah, you made me feel a little dark yeah you made me realize what i think that dream was i think it was a message that he's visiting my house like astrally and like in a bad way doing bad things and i don't want him here 
Yes, a lot. Actually, that's a really good segue to say a lot of your dreams are actually astral travels. Let me tell you guys this. So I, I actually need to post this TikTok. Um, I don't know if I'm going to post it today or tomorrow. And I have to do an in-depth YouTube video because it's a cool ass story. So long story short, I astral projected and I was going out to search. I was going to go fight a car day gym. Harder than I thought. It's actually hard to find him because he makes like a whole web of things to to get to him so i was like i'm gonna search at the town i was skimming the town but when i hopped out of my physical form i decided to shape shift so that my astral form was half lyran half draconian so i had the large alpha draco wings and i had these large lyran eyes and i had like hands that had long claws and i looked very it was like a, a mixture of both and at one point I went to I went into the kitchen and my mom was walking around as though it was real. And we had a conversation and she's like, Whoa, you look so different. And I was like, Yeah, when I go to the astral, I shift form depending on whatever assignment I gotta do. Um, and I really like this form. She's like, You look so cool and so different. And my mom's a draconian star seed, so she was like, she was like, loved it. Like, that's so cool. And we were having a conversation about stuff. And then I was like, all right, mom, I got to go. I got a mission to do quick. Just like how I do in the physical. I say the same thing. I'm like, I got a mission or assignment to do quick. Was the same thing in the astral. I was like, I got a mission to do quick. Um, I'll be flying around a little bit. I'll see you in a bit, okay? She's like, okay, bye. And that's when I was flying around the town watching and checking up on everybody. And then I realized people were starting to wake up. And I was like, okay, it's time to go back to my physical body soon. Went back to my physical body. I woke up and I was brushing my teeth and my mom's like, I had the craziest dream last night. We were having a conversation in the kitchen and you had these bat wings and you look kind of reptilian, but also like, like you had, you looked like the avatar, like you had big eyes, and you kind of look cat like, but reptilian like, it was so cool. And then you said you had to go do something. And I was like, oh, mom, I was like, mom, you remember? And she's like, what do you mean you remember? I said, that wasn't a dream. That was that was the astral realm. And when I was in the astral realm, I kept saying, she's not going to remember this conversation. But she did. It was so wild. So take note of that too, okay? A lot of your dreams, especially if they feel real, real, and like you're there, there, that is an astral projection. That's crazy. Y'all both remembered the same dream. What did you Yo, say? You guys both remember the same dream? Oh, no, no. I was just saying, like, how you and um your mom remembered the same dream. That's oh, like yeah. a connection. That's... Right? So I already knew that night I was in the astral. But that was my ultimate final confirmation saying you was in the astral. Because no way. we Everything we talked about and did, she remembered. And she was saying the exact same thing. I was like, wow, mom, you remembered that. But that's also more confirmation for me to rest in my astral powers and so everything else i did like when i was in the school astrally and i was watching all the kids all the kids kept coming up to me later saying i was walking to school and i could smell you and i was like wow they like they knew i was there it's so crazy same thing all of you guys are gonna do if you want to beautiful it's your energy you like they're familiar with it and it's strong they actually tell me that too. They're like, your energy is strong. I could feel it everywhere I go or I could smell you or sense you. And and I took that. I was like, thank you. Like that, that's good awareness for me. You, you already know we don't fully, we need sometimes outside people to tell us and show us more of who we are sometimes. And that was good for me to know. originally from draco but now they're more refugees hoping to get back their power so i'm looking at a stavros message he said i mean what star system are the negative reptilians oh yeah it's just like what Aaliyah's saying it's like saying what city or state on earth has the good humans yeah you could point and be like oh there's more here or less there but yeah it's exactly like what Aaliyah was saying
Okay, we could end it here. So much amazing, amazing shit we talked about. So if you guys have any last questions or anything you want to uh, bring up quick, definitely hit us up or take the floor. Other than that, this is going to be posted on the GFCC YouTube and you guys will be able to access this information 24 seven as well there soon. Appreciate it guys. What'd you say, sorry? Oh no, I was just saying appreciate it. Oh, I appreciate you too, bro. Honestly, you know, me and you actually got to talk soon. Just say it all. Yeah, I was thinking about, cause I had some, um, some money and I was like, I, I, th I need to get a little, like, I need to pay for one of the things with cash. I've been wanting to. <laughs> oh, you don't have to pay me, bro. Your family. If you want, you could just just DM me. You got Snapchat, right? Oh, yeah, I do. Okay, you could just Snapchat me there. Um, I answer, you guys know I answer way quicker on Snap. So you can message me and then we could uh, book a time to just talk about stuff. I would love, I can't wait to talk to you, bro. Hey, bet. I'll let you know. Yo, Felipe. Yo, what's up, Ski? Bro, I just seen what you just said, bro. But um, bro, I was definitely trying to talk to you after this um class is over. Yeah, no, I'm trying to. I, I want to too, but um, I hope, I hope my mama doesn't go from work and make me clean. <laughs> well, I'm cleaning clean. up right now too, bro. I feel you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, just I'm let me know, bro. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay, it sounds like we're already getting some organization for people going to talk and all of that. So you guys go right on ahead and we will catch up. Stavros said, can we talk about past lives after this cash? Me and you, Stavros, we got to have a call too. So just text me and then we'll book a time to talk this week um, and we will be good. And if any of you want to talk one-on-one, -on -one, don't be afraid to message me. You guys, I, I am working on a lot for the server and for stuff around my town. So uh, bear with me if I don't answer you right away, but I will answer you and I'll make sure that we have time one-on-one -on -one to talk, especially if you need it, okay? And your guide will tell me if you need it for sure. All right, guys, nice talking to you. Awesome talking to all, I love you guys all so damn much. Yes, I would love for you guys, if you're having a conversation one-on-one, -on -one, don't be afraid to go into the galactic chat rooms at the bottom. I made those so people can have conversations there. And with that, people are going to be more drawn. I've been trying to get more people to talk in there so people could see, you know, we live. We, you know, you could come in and chat with us. So I would love for you guys to chat down there if you would like. But I love you guys so much. We're going to do this again soon. You know, this is one of our favorite things to do. This is going to be on the YouTube channel. So you guys go and do your thing. And we will talk again soon, okay? Hey, much love. Peace, guys. Love to all, all of you. All right, peace out.